have no idea what's going on. project here on my channel. I've got some big plans. I'm gonna make an overall with you. A beautiful corduroy navy military inspired overall. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a bit hungover today, which is actually great because I've not been out drinking in like over a year and a half. Um, so I had a great time yesterday with my friends. All COVID safe, of course. That was really great. So today I'll really just be focusing on cutting out my pattern piece Pieces. I already constructed the pattern for the overalls. I did that with the help of my trusty bodice sloper that I've already used in the past couple of videos and I traced my favorite corduroy pants. Generally you can use any kind of pants that you love that fit you really well. I also already bought a shell fabric. It's this beautiful olive green corduroy. It has very fine rip. It looks very delicate and it's 100% cotton. So it's gonna be really nice to wear. So let's get to it. I've been wanting to sew a jumpsuit slash overall like this for a good while now. And since the weather doesn't seem to improve, I thought now was a good time. These were some of the inspiration photos I used. The boxy cut is something that I really loved, but I knew it would be really hard to accomplish for myself as I do not exactly have an androgynous figure. That's when this photo popped up. I instantly fell in love with the sleeves and the straight leg of the trousers. The silhouette I knew would be flattering on no matter who, so it was clear my jumpsuit had to look a little something like this. This particular model from the brand C, worn by Emily Sindlev, retailed for a whopping £445. After everything was said and done, I spent about 53 pounds in total on my fabric, thread and some other necessities like the zipper. I used the bodice sloper, which I already introduced in my last couple of videos, to create the pattern for the upper part of the jumpsuit. To draft the bottoms, I used one of my favorite trousers and traced them on craft paper. Okay, where to start? We are going to start with sewing in the darts into the back bodice piece just because that's what I usually do first and then I will start assembling the pants. What I decided to do is to be super exact uh, with my pieces this time and uh, making sure that I have markings on both sides of each piece to have everything super symmetrical. see now that we have the markings on both sides of our back bodice piece and something also that I wanted to mention um, which is important in the cutting process of your fabric as this is corduroy it does have a grain to it so to speak so the direction in which the fiber of the fabric is going so in this case it's going down like that as opposed to this. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but if you are doing this, then you can see that the grain, that you are going against the grain of the fabric, which is not what you want. You want it to be this way. Cool, so I've pinned the darts and now we can sew our first seams. I'm going to start with the back trousers. So I have the top part of my trousers here. I'm doing the same thing here as what I just did with the back bodice piece. I'm placing the pattern down, making sure that it is at the exact same spot as on the other side. And then I'm marking all the important spots just because I wanna be sure that everything is super symmetrical. So the nice thing about this corduroy, it also has a nice horizontal stretch to it. So it doesn't stretch this direction, but it does stretch that direction, which is great because you're gonna fit into it really nicely and it's gonna expand a little bit for our beautiful tushies. We need to put it right sides together like this and then pin it in a few strategic places, placing the needles perpendicular to the seam you're about to sew. Sewing machine can stitch over the needles nicely and you're not gonna have any broken needles on your machine. We have 
top part of the back of our pants. My goal is to overlock all of the raw edges on the inside of the um, jumpsuit of the overalls. If you don't have a serger or an overlocker, you could go for a blanket stitch on your machine. Since I do have an overlocker, that's what I'm opting for. I'm only gonna overlock all of the raw edges once I've assembled the pants once and tried them on once because if there's something wrong or it doesn't fit, I'm, I wanna be sure that I don't have to open up you know, the surged or overlocked seams. That would be annoying. I've learned from my mistakes, you guys, you know? Don't add finishing touches during the sewing process. That's nonsense, don't do that. <laughs> so, for all of you out there who have never done pants before, this is what the back of your pants look like, right? So this is the center back seam. Now what you are going to do is you're taking your pattern pieces as you've cut them, so we have two here, right? And you're just gonna go straight ahead and sew this part. You're just sewing that down. Now that we've done that, you can see when you open the pants like this, this is your center back seam and these are your two back legs. The other two legs and that's the center back seam. This is where we are going to attach the top of our back pants, but I'm uh, gonna do that in a minute. First, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I just did with the back pants with the front parts of our legs which is this piece, sewing this seam here, which is the front side of your crotch area. But what we're going to do is we're not gonna sew all the way down. I've marked, I don't know if you can see this, I've marked the end of where this double layer of fabric is going to be for the buttons, so we can go in and out of the jumpsuit. So I'm just measuring that out, how far down that goes. So that's like 16 centimeters here for my pattern. So I'm gonna be making sure that I am not sewing much further down. So 16 from the marking, not from the end of your piece, because that's the seam allowance, you're not calculating that in. So I'm adding a pin here as well. And then I'm just gonna sew this little part here. Now that is the front part of the trousers. And that's the opening where you're gonna get in. So that's why we didn't sew all the way up. These are the legs down here. The next step is to take the back piece of your trousers. What you're gonna do is you put them right sides together like so. Then you are going down to the crotch area and lining up those two seams like that. And then you're going to pin down the inner seams of your legs. You're going to line them up like this. This is the inner seam of the one side of your legs. You're gonna pin that down as well as the inner seam of the other side of your legs like that. And then you're going to go ahead, starting from the center point and sewing down one side, stopping at the hem, and then going back up, starting again at the center point, sewing down all the way on the other side of your pants. You're doing that to make sure that there's no misalignment in this area, because it's gonna be really hard to fix that if that would happen. So you don't start at one end and then sew all the way down to the other end. You always start at the center point. Good morning, it's a new day, it's early. I'm all prepped and wearing makeup because I have a few important meetings today at work that I need to take. Um, but before I do that, I will sew a little bit with you guys. Um, so we get ahead with our jumpsuit. And I've already set up my workstation, everything's here. So let's get to it. So yesterday I already, um, you know, assembled the pants and the trousers of the overalls of the jumpsuit so far and I noticed that I needed to make a few adjustments, especially also in the back area, it's a bit too wide and also in the front area, it's a bit too wide. I think the first thing I will do is sew that dart in, in the back and then check um, how it still fits together with um, the top piece of the back pants.
Um, I'm also making sure that I'm marking the adjustments on my pattern as I go. Um, so next time around when I use this pattern for trousers, I will be closer to the final product in the first go. I'm going to put the pants in front of me, the trousers in front of me, and taking the top of the back trousers and putting them right sides to right sides. And that's gonna look a bit funky when you pin it, so you want to make sure that this point here meets this point here. That's where the first needle goes. And then from here you have to play around a little bit. This uh, fabric is stretchy so I want to make sure that I'm not stretching it out too much so it's then creating some weird bulks. So we need to be careful with that. Just aligning it gently, adding a few pins where you need them. So now I've pinned all of this together. Looks a bit like that. Now we're going to sew it with a straight stitch. We've attached the top of the trousers to the bottom of the trousers. And we have this nice half moon shape. The back trousers are assembled and now we'll have to attach the waistband as well to the front. So I now just overlocked um, the raw edges of those back seams and of the front seam as well. Where is it? Here, of this one. And now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to top stitch it down from the front. Um, it's going to be a decorative seam. It's just a straight stitch, very simple. I'm probably going to set my stitch length to about three and then just closely to the edge um, give this a straight stitch so everything's secured nicely and is folded downwards. And that's what that then looks like. A neat little seam. Okay, so I'm just finished the trousers of the overalls and now I'm going to attach the shoulder seams of the back and front bodice pieces and then I'm going to attach the facing as well. And then giving that a straight stitch. So what you might be able to see here is that the collar on the sides flips upwards ever so slightly and this is exactly what we want because this is going to enable it to lie nicely on your shoulders. And uh, we are now going to cut back the seam allowance a little bit and nip it in some strategic places and then flip the collar the right side out. This was the point where I prepared the facing. I sewed the center back seam and pinned the whole thing right sides together with my lapel. Once I was sure about the placement of the facing, I sandwiched the collar in between the facing and lapel, making sure the right side of the collar was facing outwards. It's half past nine in the evening. We're on collar number two and this looks much better. Good morning. Yeah, chewy. I braided my hair yesterday and I look like I'm 10 years old, which I'm not mad at. <laughs> yesterday was a bit of a tough day. I had a lot going on at work and um, was sewing in the evening. And then there was another collar construction fiasco. I had to do another one. I think next time I'm planning to sew something with a collar. I'm just not gonna cut out the collar in the first stage, but then sew together the bodice, cut out the collar from a calico, put it into the final piece, check if it works, you know 
and then cutting it out of the shell fabric. So yeah, um, I was sort of able to get the bodice to a point where I'm happy with it. The trousers are basically finished. I will now try the bodice, probably have to cut out the armholes a little bit, fit in the sleeves and then the top is finished and the bottom is finished and then it's about joining them together. Which I'm not nervous about at all. <laughs> Does this look bad? I don't think so. I mean, I'm loving a little vest moment. So <laughs> I'm, right now I'm thinking about not joining those two pieces together, but leaving them as a trouser and a top. Well, we shouldn't deviate too much from our initial plans, I think. But then again, you should let creativity roam, right? I'm gonna make a jumpsuit, no worries. I can definitely live with that. Okay, let's put in the sleeves. This was a relatively simple sleeve and if you would like to see how I constructed the pattern for this, please check out my DIY reformation dress video. I closed the side seam, added a box pleat, I had to google the proper name of this, to the length of the sleeve, overlocked all of the row edges, folded the length over once and top stitched it down. Okay, so now we're gonna put in our sleeves. I just finished um, the length of them and added this nice little pleat here to give them a bit of a cinched in look. And now we're going to align the side seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the bodice. And then I'm going to, I like to do that, I don't know if other people do that, but once I've aligned it, I take the sleeve and then I put it towards the front about the distance of the seam allowance just because we tend to you know move our arms forwards much more than we move them backwards so having a bit of you know a natural movement of the sleeve towards that direction um, is beneficial obviously uh, I place them right sides together and then just slowly moving around the armhole and pinning in the sleeve Now I'm going to put my hand inside here, take the seam allowance and pull it outwards. So I'm turning my bodice inside out. And now I'm having my sleeve here and this is my bodice. So you can see that I have a lot more um, length in the sleeve than I have in the armhole and that is intentional because I also wanna um, give it a nice pleat on the shoulder. So I'm just pinning in the sleeve until I reach the shoulder point, the apex. And now I know how much I have left to pleat, right? Which is quite a lot, to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to pull shit apart and line up the center apex of the sleeve with the apex of the shoulder seam. This is a bit freestyle. You can of course measure everything out if you want at first and I end up with about three pleats on this side. Um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like from the outside in a sec. And now turning everything around. That's what that then looks like. So we get a bit of a lifted puffy effect is what I was aiming for, for this jumpsuit. I feel like straight out of the 80s. Check this out, this is where it's at. So we have the top, we have the bottoms, and uh, this is how far I am. And now I need to figure out the next steps, which are probably first adding the pockets to the top and the trousers, and then connecting the two. So, Let's do that. The pockets were super easy to assemble but cumbersome as I had a lot of pieces. I overlocked all of the raw edges to prevent them from fraying. I then top stitched the few edges that I knew would be used often as my hand would probably glide in and out of them a lot. I then measured out the spaces on the jumpsuit that I knew I wanted to place the pockets on, making sure everything was symmetrical. Once I pinned them in place, I wrangled it all through my machine.
The only pockets that I stitched on by hand were the ones in the bust area as I wanted to make sure those looked extra neat. I have no idea what's going on. The weather is absolutely horrendous and it's been like this for a month now. So I don't even know what I'm doing sewing my summer wardrobe, but here we are. Guys, we're entering the final stretch. There are about three things left to do. One is I need to join the bodice with the trousers. Two is I need to add a sort of closure in the front because we have a button up situation. And three is I will have to hem the legs of the trousers. And now we're finished. I'm so excited about this and I'm so excited to get this off my table because I've been working on this for over a week and I just want to wear it and not sew it anymore. So let's do this. After I tried to figure out what kind of closure I wanted to give the jumpsuit, I put on my coat and went outside to get a few last bits and bobs that I needed. So I quickly ran for a zipper because I realized that that would look way cooler on the overall and it would also be a lot less work. So I got a zipper in the right color. It's just a regular old zipper, nothing too fancy. Um, so I'm gonna put that in and because I don't have a lot of fabric left, I found this which is like a belt sort of situation so the quality is really like um, a seat belt in a car to be honest and I think it has a really nice sheen to it and the different texture might give the overalls a bit more interest so that's gonna be the belt and while I was at it I already bought my fabric for my next tutorial look at this beauty Ditsy little floral fabric, really cute. Um, so that's for my next tutorial. By the way, this is not some cool after effect. This is literally my camera slowly gliding down the tripod. I'm still in my baby shoes with this all, you guys. Okay, my friends, we have now successfully joined together the jumpsuit slash overalls slash i still don't know what to call it but that's what it is it's a onesie so i've joined everything together it looks really good and now last thing left to do is to add the zip in the center front and i did that by opening up my facing again and now i'm gonna pin it in all the way down and sew it in After lots and lots of pinning, I sewed in the zip, added a few decorative top stitches, scorched the ends of the belt that I bought so it wouldn't fray, and that was it. Please enjoy some footage of my exhausted happy face after project completion. And now for the final look. <laughs> 